Hello, Bill. Good morning, Matt. Welcome to the DMZ, everybody. And Bill, I'm checking Twitter the other day, and I see where Janine Garoppolo has cited you as somebody that um, MSNBC specifically should... uh, (laughs) Should be focused more on that. You're you're one of a handful, a very small elite list of of, of progressive pundits that she thinks uh, are worth paying attention to. Uh, I, I, do you know Do you know her? Where did the, Where did this come from? I cannot quibble with the with the wisdom of Janine Garofalo. I I, <laughs> I, I, I can't believe we did, we never talked about this. Um, you know, was this from your days uh, on on talk radio or something? Yeah, yeah. So you know, in the Air America radio days, I mean, the reason why I was on Air America was that uh, Janine Garofalo and Sam Cedar reached out to me to be a weekly blogger guest. So I was on her show for uh, I can't remember when it actually uh, went under, but it was it was it was several years. Uh, and, and and people also don't know you were also in uh, the Truth About Cats and Dogs, <laughs> and. Um, did a stint in the uh, Generation X, uh, what was that Ben Stiller movie? Was she in that? Re- anyway. Reality Bites. Um, reality Bites. Uh, Sam Cedar is is friends with Mark Maron, I assume, right. also from the radio That's right. thing. That's right. And I think he was on a an episode of Maron's uh, TV show. Probably. So. I would, I would think so, yeah. uh, but uh, Janine Garoppolo actually was just in Northampton uh, last month on her on a on a stand up tour, and I and I saw her we, and we hung a little backstage. And she, she you may not also might not know she is an avid beater, so she made some beaded necklaces and uh, bracelets for for my brood. Uh, that makes perfect sense, actually. <laughs> it's entirely believable. Um, so yeah, so thank you, Janine, for the shout out. Much praise. I, I, as Gina Louise, uh, my wife noted, uh, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Bill Sher is in Cosmo. That's where she made the where she made the comments. Uh, so I've achieved another is, another life goal. That is awesome. Well, congratulations. Um, you had a better week than Donald Trump. <laughs> so after the third debate, uh, Politico sometimes does a. Uh, these pundit roundups where they ask, you know, a dozen or so people uh, a question after a debate. And the question of this one was, is the election over? Uh, and I wrote a little something where I said yes, and pretty much everyone else did too. So I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not out on a limb on this one. Although, as our, as our super fan, uh, Rob uh, Nepal always points out, and you point out, my predictions are always wrong. But I'm going all in on this one. Hillary's going to win. They are usually wrong. <laughs> Um, but I did say, is, I did say there are there are four things we don't know in the election. Uh, number one, will Hillary break fifty percent? And if she did, that would be the third time in a row a Democratic presidential candidate broke fifty percent, which has not happened since nineteen forty. Uh, number two, can Gary Johnson break five percent, which would qualify the Libertarians for federal campaign funds in twenty twenty? Can number three? Can Evan McMullen get Utah's six electoral votes, which we talked about last week? Uh, and number four, can the Democrats actually take back the Senate or, or even the House? So I think th- those are the real right, right. those are the real questions well, on election day. Let me ask you about number three. Yeah, there's a chance that McMullen would keep both sides under two seventy. Uh, which would throw it to the house, but it have to be. I'm not sure exactly for that, to, for that to be the case. Yeah. So I don't know how like it's probably unlikely that that would happen, but I think that might be the worst possible scenario. Like, I don't see how that, if that's what you're aiming to do, like if you want to make history, then fine. Um, but in terms of actually, we have a country that is chaotic and divided, <laughs> and I just feel like. The worst possible scenario might be sending it to the House. And by the way, they would only have three choices. They, you know, McMullen, Hillary, or Trump. And I think they would throw it to Trump, probably. Well, I guess that's so, the big question. Would, would the Republican House give it to Trump, even though he was clearly not the winner? Uh, would they give it to McMullen because they realize right. that giving it to Trump is insane? Would there be massive pressure on them to say, come on, Hillary was the popular vote winner here. You can't go against that. Uh, or do they deadlock think, like, and okay. it ends up being the vice president who gets it because the vice president is decided by the Senate, and, and that's a top two choice. So, okay, when you, that's, that's the next question. When you say the vice president, do you mean 
Joe Biden? Or do you mean Tim I mean, Kaine versus Kane Mike or Pence? Pence. Kane or Pence. So there's a way we could get Pence? Yeah. Is that... Oh, well, then in that case, the, maybe this is the the brilliant strategy. <laughs> I mean, that was the outcome in, in our... Veep, in HBO's Veep, the, the House deadlocks and the and the Senate choice gets it. Um, but uh, so, so so walk me through this real quick, because I'm a little slow on the uptake. How does Pence, what is the scenario that Pence could get it? So uh, f- correct me if I'm wrong, DMZ, comment thread fact checkers, but my understanding is... We know is, you well. We uh, know you well. If the House deadlocks, uh, and I think... I think that would have to be before inauguration day. If the House can't come to a, a, a majority choice, then whoever, is, and assuming the Senate doesn't deadlock, because that's a that's a you know, that's a binary choice, so I guess that's not really possible to, to deadlock. Uh, and it's a, and it's the current Senate, so it's the Republican Senate that's choosing. Uh, they the House deadlocks, Senate chooses Pence for VP. VP gets presidency by default come come inauguration day. I believe, uh, I believe okay. that is the order order of events. All right, so th- we're really wading into an alternate history here, probably a little too in the weeds, but uh, I think that helps me. Um, but, but you you have so you maybe know, that's that's the. And we, it, we do need to get like it's good to talk about like even remote, even though it's a remote possibility. It, it's interesting to. Uh, to game it out because it's it's within the realm of possibility, I guess. Right. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, it was in the realm of possibility in mid September after the pneumonia video and the polls looked close, <laughs> but that was a blip over the course of the polling of the year. This has been my point for this. Is another point I made yeah. in the political piece, and you know, others have talked about this too. You know, what is the turning point? that Trump lost this? Was it the third debate? Was it the first debate? Was it the hot mic comments? Was it the cons? Uh, and was it the tax returns? Uh, and my point has been, he was losing the whole time. He was losing ever since he entered the race and he called Mexicans rapists and criminals. His unfavorables went over 60% the whole time. He has never led in the average yeah, against Hillary Clinton. There's just these brief that's moments. That's true, but I, 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 he could have turned it around. He could have turned it around. Yeah. I think there are two moments that matter the most the con moment and the hollywood uh the access hollywood hot mic those are by i think way more important than anything else well i mean you could say if trump was an entirely different human being who wasn't uh, overtly bigoted against immigrants uh that maybe or if he was just more disciplined and willing to lie about it and and disguise that bigotry but i i think the the most important point here this i think is very important for for you sir as someone who wants to reform and modernize the republican party if you blame this on trump's personal obnoxiousness you can make the argument then that the bulk of Trump's platform could could be a winning platform in the future. Uh, yeah, but I'm about no, but I'm about I'm not about um, revisionist history. I'm about trying to fairly interpret what happened. Well, I think it's a and fair so interpretation. Even, it's, well, it's a fair interpretation that being overtly anti-immigrant is political suicide and you can prove that in this election his unfavorable right what i bad truly believe day one and that was the the thrust of his day one uh, announcement speech no but i look i've opposed trump the entire time there's not been a minute where i was voting for donald trump or supporting trump and uh and i think that trump is bad long term electorally and and he's bad morally and ethically um more importantly Having said all of that, I do believe that a month ago, six weeks ago, he could have turned things around and possibly won had he said things differently, had he run a different campaign. I don't think that's and, and by me admitting to that, I, I think that's I think that's reality as, as political analysis. I don't. But what do you mean by different campaign? Do you, do you mean pivoting on immigration? Or do you mean just uh, issuing fewer insults to people? I think that he could have, within the scope of of who he is and what he has said, so, so without completely be flip flopping. By the way, let me. Uh, I'm, I'm turning my light on here. Uh, a couple of uh, a quick diversion. A couple of of people have uh, 
over over time have asked me um, about my setup here in this office. <laughs> and one of the problems I have is that um, I guess it's because of, of, of the leftists uh, and the regulation uh, that want to save energy. Um, the lights in my office will if you know it never normally and you're if you're if you're working you're, you're moving around and so the lights stay on but if I like the one time that I just sit still for an extended period is when I'm taping this show and for some stupid reason if you sit still in this office the lights will all go off after about five minutes and I've tried putting um, there's like sensors so I thought well maybe if I put like tape over those sensors that it wouldn't happen it still happens so anyway um that is why my lights frequently will go off when i'm I, when i'm taking i think you're office. just digressing because you don't want to deal with the reality <laughs> that trump's immigration position was a political loser from the beginning no i disagree bill i disagree it's a uh, i think his position is wrong i do not like it but i believe there is a way that he could have held that position and won the election by um, by softening it in some in some ways, by talking about how we need to uh, you know build the I think build the I, so I think build the wall is actually a winner. Um, I think that there's a way to uh, to play and pander to working class white angst and win the election if you do it in such a way that doesn't turn off say Republican college educated Republican women. So I'm not endorsing. So you're, you're, you're saying I'm not endorsing this. All white think, strategy. They did not to win any any additional Latino votes at all. No, I wouldn't say that. But I but I would say because 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 I, I reject the notion that he wouldn't have won that he got zero percent of Latino votes. But look, Donald Trump could have won this election if you go back a month ago, like right before the first debate. He was down a couple points, you know, depending maybe three or four points polling average. All he needed. To get over the hump was college educated white women and what does he do he attacks alicia machado he interrupts hillary clinton and then the access hollywood uh hot mic tape comes out so i think clearly his biggest problem uh has been the 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 misogynist side of him not the immigrant side of him Right. That's my that's my thing. I'm not endorsing like like I'm not saying it's a good thing that he could have won despite I think that the things he said that should have been disqualifying a year ago, the things he said a year ago that did disqualify him in my view, I still think he could have won had he played his cards differently as recently as a month ago. Well, I I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to disagree on two points. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, number one, I mean, Trump the race w was tight in the general election trial heats at only 3 points throughout the entire year. One was the tail end of the Democratic primary, which I would argue uh, the Bernie voters were sort of at, 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 at peak, uh, peak, peak, if you will. Uh, and, peak, and, peak, and, I like that. And we'll, and we'll, and we'll hold it out briefly. Uh, second point was the, the day after the Republican convention, and that was literally just one day. Uh, and then number three was in the aftermath of the, of the pneumonia video. Uh, and once she was back on the trail, some people thought maybe it was basket of deplorables, but uh, after she was back on the trail, those numbers started to widen again. Uh, so uh, I, none of that strikes me as an argument that uh, Trump had something else up his sleeve that could have, have saved him because some of the more incendiary stuff, you know, the, the, the cons, Machado, uh, uh, yeah, the debate before it says, you know, he was losing before all that. He was losing before, he was losing throughout the primary in the general election heats. Uh, so, uh, uh, so well, that, and it, the other, the other, the other caveat, Bill, is, and, and, and I know you'll push back on this and, and, and say there's no proof, but, you know, the notion that there might be a couple of points, that, that he might be under polling uh, by a couple of points, that, that there may be people who, uh, you know, look, Hillary's not going to turn out millennials probably to the degree Obama did. She's not going to turn out African-Americans probably to the degree that Obama did. And there may be working class white men who are going to wade through, bro you know, hell, go through, crawl through broken glass to vote for Trump in places like Ohio and places like Iowa. Um, and it's just he's had a horrible month, and he's lost at least two of the last three, uh, at least two of the three debates. 
Um, and he's had this huge Access Hollywood scandal. I think that the last month has been very important. I, I don't think it was necessarily uh, a, a foregone conclusion baked into the cake. Um, would Republicans be better off having read my book and, and nominated Marco Rubio? Of course. Of course. I, would, I would have loved to have seen Rubio um, talking uh, in that debate uh, against Hillary Clinton. I would have loved to have seen it, especially the stuff about the right to life and things like that. It will never, the Republican Party missed an amazing opportunity. And they could have, there's a chance, not, not a crazy chance, that if things had gone differently, the Republican Party could have this year elected president, the first Hispanic uh, uh, Republican president. I think they would have then held the, the U.S. Senate and the House. And that, 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 that come January, Republicans could have had the presidency, the House, and the Senate, and a young uh, gener new generation of leadership. And instead, they threw it away on a uh, you know thrice-married billionaire casino magnate who invited Hillary Clinton to his wedding. That's what they did. They're idiots, basically. Well, and they deserve to lose. I mean, they deserve I mean, what, they, they, they got what they deserve. I mean, one other point that's unrelated to the immigration issue, because your, your point was that if Republicans weren't losing the college-educated whites, and particularly white women, uh, yeah. and, you know, and there's evidence now that he's losing white working class women after the hot mic comments. Uh, but so if you're yeah. saying if he was losing those constituencies, he wouldn't have to do all that much better with Latinos and he could still pull it out. Right, Bill. And, and let me just so I hate to jump in. Real, but I'll say this real quick. Part of the reason for that is that we have an electoral college. Right. So a lot of Hispanics are in states, say, like California or New York, that Hillary Clinton is going to win. It doesn't matter if she wins California by one vote or by 10 million votes. She gets the same number of electoral well, votes. They, they, they got, but they, a lot of the working class white voters that Trump might win are in places like Ohio and Pennsylvania. And that is why I always thought that Trump had this this chance, even late in the game. Well, Trump needed Latinos if you want to win states like Nevada and Colorado and Virginia <laughs> and Arizona and, and Florida. Yeah. And he might and he might lose Arizona now because of it. Um, now, yeah. why working class may be enough to win uh, Ohio and Iowa. Those are the two previously blue states that he's got the best shot in. Pennsylvania seems the hardest for him because of that of that college educated white vote, particularly in the Philly suburbs. That seems to be his main obstacle there. Now there was a uh, it wasn't a standalone report, but it was mentioned in a Politico story a couple weeks ago by Glenn Thrush that the Clinton focus groups show that those college educated Republican leaners are very influenced by the climate change issue and that rejecting climate science is is a is a is a is a, is a great wedge issue for democrats to bring those soft republicans college educated republicans over uh so that raises the question whether any of the republicans that were in the running uh could have survived a real focus onslaught on that issue because uh, Rubio was really tied up in knots over, you know, whether, you know, climate change is real. Uh, so it, it wouldn't have been as wild and crazy an election. But there, there, there are outstanding questions, like both on immigration and climate change. And I, maybe you could also even argue uh, women's issues like abortion, uh, that all those things are not working for Republicans right now. And so if if they blame everything on on Trump's ticks yeah. that they're not going to make the other readjustments that they need to be a competitive national party going forward. Which is another reason, look, even if I, look, I may or may not, you know, we could quibble on your premise, but let's just assume that your, pre that your premise is correct. We've missed a chance to find that out, to definitively find it out, you know, uh, by, by nominating a candidate who would truly test whether or not presenting our viewpoint in a coherent and ironic way would lose. Uh, maybe it's because our ideas are out of touch with the American people. Maybe it's because there's a liberal media that even the best, most eloquent uh, conservative um, can't overcome. But we would have maybe tested that theory. We don't know because Donald Trump 
has among the many things he's done to us is is prevent that that test from taking place. You know, my my whole argument uh, that I go back to that parties tend to change after losing presidential elections three times in a row. You know the yeah. the underlying which was what happened to the Democrats after they lost throughout the eighties and they pivoted with with Bill Clinton toward towards the middle. Uh, part of that underlying premise is. If you're losing three times in a row, the problem is not them; it's you. Uh, you you can't blame. Well, Barack Obama was a special candidate, so we couldn't win. You know, now now it's Hillary Clinton. You know, she is apparently not the strongest candidate, and you still couldn't do it. Uh, this is the this will be the sixth out of the last seven presidential elections where Republicans lost the presidential popular vote. Uh, so right, but if Republicans lose this election, it will not be because. The American public rejected conservative philosophy. Well, when, because when is Donald it going to Trump, be that? Donald Trump is not to presenting. To be that? I'm sorry? How many times do you have to lose before it is that? Well, uh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, as you know, because you, uh, you helped me uh, edit Too Dumb to Fail, you know that I have a somewhat nuanced position, which I call modernize, not moderate. So there are, so I believe that conservative philosophy in general is correct and uh, is, is a winning, that wins every time it's actually tried. Um, but, but we need to modernize. So that's where I come down. I'm not, I'm not advocating a status quo, but you know, if a Ben Sass or a Nikki Haley or a Marco Rubio uh, were on the ballot and ran a good campaign, and the voters rejected that um, to Hillary Clinton, who is not a great candidate, then I think it would be pretty clear that you you can't just uh, do a little tinkering. This isn't a marketing problem. It is a substantive problem. Um, it doesn't mean our ideas are wrong, but it certainly means that we're, you know, the American public doesn't agree with them. But we, but we can't, we're not having that that opportunity. Well, I mean, to, I, to find I that generally out. agree with what you said there. I, I won't go as far as to say conservatism wins every time it is it is properly tried. I think that's <laughs> just by overstating it. But and, but I wouldn't say Republicans must now become liberals because the country is firmly on the left and will never change. That that that's right. overstating it too. But there are definitely. I think there's evidence that we're in a center left time. Uh, doesn't mean that every liberal issue wins across the board. But there are certain things. Like I think, like uh, accepting climate science, accepting immigration reform, accepting uh, you know contraception and health insurance packages, uh, you know, accepting the basic argument that there is a government role to play in solving problems doesn't mean that that government solves everything. But I think running, yeah. I think running on a a a uh, knee jerk anti government platform in the aftermath of the Bush years, I don't think works. Uh, I think you have to. I think you have to modernize and be nuanced and say, yeah. there are there are twenty first century issues that we have to deal with. They're not Reagan era issues. They're not Bush era issues. And we have right. conservative no, based solutions I, okay. for those those problems. I completely agree. I mean, I think that there's a reordering taking place, and I think that you're right. Attitudes and, and the public is is shifting on things, but I don't see it as the public going to the left per se. I mean, I think it's just, it's changing. And there are conservative, you know, Uber is something I talk about in the book, um, is an example uh, of, of this. I mean, um, you know, is it fair for me to say that, you know, the cab companies and the, and the unions uh, and the sort of the, the big city boss system of giving out these medallions and, and uh, that that is democratic liberalism and that uber uh is this entrepreneurial disruptive conservative solution that 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 makes our lives better um if that's the case then then that's one area where things are skewing um more conservative the truth is that things are changing and uh and in some cases for the better in some cases for the worse but i think it's an opportunity you know for for conservatives um you know, I think we're, we're getting more libertarian, more individualistic. In some cases, that's good. In some cases, it's bad. But I think, like, if it's school choice, then that's an area where I think we're winning against the uh, the teachers' unions, you know? I just think we're on the right side of that issue. And there's other issues that are going to be a lot more challenging 
and the 21st century for conservatives. But anyway, Republicans have all these governors, 30 some governorships, well, control as, the U.S. Senate, as, 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 as of today. continuously control the U.S. Senate, <laughs> and have the House of Representatives as well. As of so today. <laughs> Now forget that. <laughs> well, let's talk about that. We're, we don't have a lot of time today. We're, we're well, under the gun. Yeah, okay, but but, but, but are we going to keep? Before we jump into that, I know, I know, I, we don't have a lot of time. But I want to make one other point. So, you know, I gave this speech last week to the local chapter of the World Affairs Council, which was all about how the parties may be changing vis a vis foreign policy. Uh, that the Democrats are now the National Security Party. Uh, the Republicans really yeah. are not. I mean, this is to be the third election in a row where foreign policy arguments were made against Democratic nominee that aren't that aren't sticking. People thought that uh, if there was a terrorist attack on American soil, that would boost Trump's numbers. That was not true. Uh, and uh, I think that one deserves an asterisk. Why is that? Why is that deserve an asterisk? Because I think that t- I think that terrorist attacks, by and large, would benefit Trump. But the one you're talking about um, happened, uh, th- there were extenuating circumstances. It was at a gay nightclub. Um, is that, I assume you're not talking about San well, Bernardino. Well, Bernardino. You're, talk, you're talking about the... San Bernardino and, 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 I think, and Orlando, neither one of these things yeah. has benefited Republicans in the presidential election. Well, look, I think Paris certainly benefited Trump. Um, but I think that there are extenuating circumstances. And I think Trump's Mis, mishandling and, and sort of overplaying them uh, are, are part of the story. Well, but, I but, think but, that, but, that, but that the, he the got previous overseas. default was that by its very nature, by the party's very nature, the public would turn to Republicans as a safe harbor when they feel their national security is threatened. And that has not happened in the last if three elections. tomorrow election. there are videos of Christians being beheaded somewhere... Trump goes up in the polls. Well, well, I, 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 well, I, well I, I hope the theory doesn't get tested, but if it does, we would say. Yes, me too. Uh, me but, too. Uh, so my point was in the speech that, you know, not that Hillary is a neocon, I supposedly said that she's not, but she's definitely uh, in the interventionist camp, uh, and, as is Obama, although Clinton is a couple ticks more hawkish than, than, than he is. Uh, and Trump, I called not an isolationist or a pacifist uh, or even an anti-imperialist. He wants to take the oil in many cases, but he's really a nationalist. Whatever is in the national interest, whether it's intervention or non-intervention, you know, that's it, it's it's based on narrow national interest, not global humanitarian uh, interest. Uh, so uh, there's a big question going forward how the Republicans define themselves uh, on foreign policy grounds post-Trump. Uh, and 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 there's a question uh, those on the non-interventionist left how comfortable do they feel remaining in a Hillary Clinton led democratic party so after this election people people might not people may say i'm not a democrat anymore i'm not a republican anymore based on foreign policy issues because the definitions are changing uh, so i think it's just it's another area where things are yeah. in flux totally and, and and i think republicans missed their opportunity this time to uh, to elect a young, um, sort of intellectual conservative who who could um, bridge, the, you know, sort of address the the times and, and these issues and, and adapt uh, and modernize, not moderate. So, so if, if you want to see, amazing. you want to see my full forty five minute talk, which covers one hundred and eighteen years of American foreign policy political positions in both parties. Uh, if you go to YouTube. Uh, well, you can go to worldaffairscouncil.com. Uh, you could also go to YouTube and Google my name and World Affairs Council, and it will it'll pop up. Having said that, you are going to get into what happens with the House and Senate now. Uh, well, maybe we should. Uh, you tell me. Do we have to, Should we should we tease this and hold it, or do you want to talk about it a little? I, I bet there'll be more to talk about next week. I, I think we can do five minutes right. and still have more to talk about next week. Uh, well, okay. I, I think the big people, one, I know, look, and I know people can't get enough of this show. I'll just say. <laughs> We continue to see uh, people out preaching the gospel about this on Twitter, uh, about how the DMZ show, the best podcast. And let me say, if you don't, if you don't like me trying to turn the lights on and off, then listen. <laughs> it's better as a podcast. You don't need to see us. But people love what, this thing that we've, that we've built here. In, in my World Affairs Council intro, I was interviewed by 
the head of uh, MassLive.com, which is a big, big statewide news organization in, in Massachusetts. Uh, I was in, in part of the introduction. Uh, she mentioned my Easy Bake Oven accident because she was watching the show. Uh, <laughs> and and I also did a debate at Springfield Technical Community College earlier that day. And one of the one of the people in the audience came up to me and said you know, he's a, he's a fan of the show. So once again, people love that. Once again, uh, DMV, I mean, it's it's, it's amazing make- because we literally do put. No thought into this whatsoever. <laughs> Maybe that's the secret. That's the secret. Uh, that's the, that's how Trump's got to start. It's like Donald Trump's action. debating style. <laughs> Basically, I put we put about as much thought into this as Trump puts into his debate preparation. <laughs> but I digress. So the big question about House and Senate, I think, is how is turnout affected by the fact that the presidential election is seen as a fait accompli? Does it mean that Democrats become complacent or people on the left feel more liberated to vote third party because they think it's not going to change the outcome? Uh, although more, more specifically, if they don't show up, with how, how would it affect down ballot? And or do Republicans who are soft Trump uh, say, I, I never really wanted to vote for the guy in the first place. I know he's a loser. I'm so disgusted. Uh, I stay home. Uh, if it's more the, the latter than the former, then I can, you could see a big swing in the Senate and maybe a takeover of the House. It would have to be a really huge wave not seeing the polls right now for that to happen. But the way it would happen would be for that, a GOP turnout collapse while Democrat turnout is is near full strength. Uh, that did not happen in 1996. 1996, Clinton was up by double digits in the CNN and the Gallup polls, and he ended up only winning by 8.5, and the Democrats lost two Senate seats. Uh, so there's no, there was a concerted effort, I think, that year to basically say Bill Clinton's going to win, so elect a Republican in the Senate right. to balance, to, have, to provide checks and balances. Right. Uh, so, and, and, and Republicans are, like Pat Toomey and I think uh, Ayotte uh, are, are are flirting with that without being because you've got to be careful, right? Because Bob Dole was okay with Republicans doing that, but but Donald Trump won't be. So if Toomey is too like obvious about that messaging, then Trump could come after him, and then that would you know Toomey needs to win. <laughs> Toomey's in a tough spot, right? Because he needs like suburban moms in Philadelphia suburbs to vote for him, but he also needs Donald Trump fans in uh, Harrisburg or whatever, you know? Well, this is it. this is the big divide in the party. If the party's two camps, roughly speaking, uh, can't get along, uh, can't turn out for the same candidate, you know, that's not just bad in this election, that's bad long term. Uh, a, a, Kelly, there's a time story. Uh, Kelly Ayotte and John McCain came out like, saying we're not going to vote for Trump after the hot mic comments, and they found examples of individual Trump supporters saying, "Well, I'm going to vote for the Democrat and teach them a lesson." Uh, I mean, I don't know how widespread it's going to be, but if if that's happening, uh, even by a small amount, these are uh, not in Arizona so far, but New Hampshire's a tight race, Pennsylvania's a tight race. Uh, if you're losing a chunk, Joe Hack in Joe Hack in Nevada, yeah was heckled by a couple people. I think the media over blew it a little bit, but he was heckled by some Trump supporters when he announced uh, his break from Trump. Um, you've got Mark Kirk in Illinois, who I think everyone well, thinks he, is going he was already He was already living. I mean, Illinois and Wisconsin, I think, are the safe Dem. Seat. Ron Johnson in Wisconsin, yeah. probably going down. The question was is, it Richard Burr? Two more and Richard not lose Burr? Anything. Is that an actor or a senator? I'm sorry? Burr in North Carolina. Yeah, Burr... Burr. Uh, yeah, because you because know, uh, uh, Portman is is pretty good in Ohio. We're very good in Ohio. I mean, your tight Portman's rate. doing great, right? Yeah. But so we're on the bubble, at the, and, and Rubio's going to probably win. Um, there are, I mean, probably. I mean, he's led every poll that I've seen, but I've seen some close ones. Uh, so uh, I wouldn't totally write off Murphy in Florida, but uh, you know, North Carolina, New Hampshire, um, Nevada. Um, uh, you know, Missouri is getting close. I've seen some. I've seen some dead heat rates in, in Missouri. 
Uh, and we, and it, we, I think we said Pennsylvania. This is Blunt. Yeah, Roy, Blunt, Blunt versus Blunt. Kander. Kander exactly. had the yeah. best ad of the yeah. cycle where he, where he assembles his rifle blindfolded and dares Blunt to do the same thing while talking about his, his gun control position. Uh, so- and Blunt, who is a consummate establishment insider, is hugging Trump in that state, the last I checked. Right. Well, Trump is, uh, Trump is he playing with Missouri, so that's not, that's not crazy. Because he has to, yeah. So, okay, so that brings us, though, to the denouement, which, which is... Uh, do you have to bet, or do Republicans hold the Senate, and do they hold the House? I mean, to win the House, Democrats have to win literally every toss-up, every lean Republican yeah. district as, as gauged by the Cook Report and by the Rothenberg-Gonzalez Report, and then I think maybe even like one or two more beyond that to, to actually take over. But they say these waves break late. I mean, that's the one thing that people say. I don't remember that in 06, but or 94. But, but I'm hearing, but I'm hearing that it's the last week that it just the the levy breaks. So you wouldn't, you might not see it coming at this this at this stage. I mean, the only thing that we can that we can say right now is there's a clear break in the presidential polling, the definite widening since since mid September, and now that race is pretty solidly, you know, six seven points in in the averages. Uh, and then the question is, does 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 that then cascade into the the Senate and House races? And I think I, I don't think you're going to see. And, and, and to your point that the country is not deeply Democratic right now, I don't think you're going to see a bunch yeah. of Trump supporters say, "Okay, I'm I'm Democrat all of a sudden," except for these handful of cases where they're mad at the Republican candidate. Um, the other thing too, Bill, yeah, we're all assuming that 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 this could depress turnout for Hillary, like the fact that that's now almost a foregone conclusion. Why wouldn't there be a bandwagon effect? Why wouldn't there be like, yeah, I'm excited. She's going to kill Trump. I'm going to go vote for her. I'm going to make history the first woman president. Like, is that an absurd possibility? Well, I, I think the more likely motivation on the left is we want to crush Trump. We want him to lose by a lot. We want it to be a clear, unmistakable message that right. America rejects this. So I think that is a different dynamic than 96. I mentioned 96 because it did happen that way once. There is some evidence of soft support for Hillary or flirtation with Stein or Johnson, people on the left who still haven't forgiven her, uh, and the WikiLeaks stuff arguably stirs that up again. So I don't want to say definitively you're going to have this surge of Democrats at the end, uh, but you do have some competing factors that we didn't see in, in 1996. And crushing Trump, actually, ironically, is also good for conservatives. I mean, if he's going to lose anyway, um, you know, putting aside the Senate... Uh, which is obviously a huge thing to put aside. If you're a conservative and you, you know, if Trump's going to lose anyway, then you would want him to lose by a landslide, just to re- utterly reject Trumpism. Well, I think we have to leave it on that note, and sir. It, that way, Sean Hannity, Sean Hannity can't blame the Never Trumpers uh, if it's a landslide, and he'll try. If it's not. Um, okay, so we're going to postpone our predictions. We're, we're going to weasel out. But the good news is, well, we have uh, that there are, we have a, we have two, more, two more shows, right? So we're going to do a future show. I think we're going to have. Maybe we should just go state by state and predict them. That would be fun. Yeah, you know, not the House, but the Senate. But that's but that that should be for the the first week of November. All right, let's plan on it. Okay. All right, another award winning show, as always here. Uh, always good to talk to you. Follow us on. Follow us on Twitter at DMZ Show. Uh, Bill Share, good talking to you, and we'll see you next week. All right, take care. Thanks.